Hi, I'm Miranda. Welcome to the Gospel of Explosions Word Ministry of Sardis, Georgia. Our location is 811 Sap Street. Our pastor is the Honorable Bishop Willie Jones Jr. Our service time as it follows Tuesday Bible study at 7.30, Sunday 10 a.m. prayer, 10.15 Sunday school, 11 a.m. morning worship. You are cordially invited to worship with us during our services. Thank you from yours truly, Miranda Pierce of the Gospel of Explosion Word Ministry. Just in the Just an old sweet song 
Blessings in that powerful name of Jesus. I bring you greetings from the Gospel Explosion Word Ministry, 811 South Street in the city of Sardis, Georgia, under the direction of none other than our Honorable Bishop Willie Jones, Jr. Today, our word will be coming from the book of 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the third through the fifth verse. That's the book of 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, starting at the third through the fifth verse. And today, our topic will be denominational racism, denominational racism. So many times, glory to God, we think racism is just about color. It's a black, it's a white, it's a yellow, it's a purple, it's a green thing. But no, racism started in the church. Glory to God. Racism come in all forms, size, and shape. We just focus on one particular thing, and that is color. But God is going to teach us today that even in the church, there is racism. And when you learn about this, God wants you to do better about your understanding and your comprehension level. He wants you to do better with your walk with him. Glory to God. And it says here, praise ye the Lord. For are ye yet carnal? For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? How many know glory to God when you participate in racism in the church, you got a carnal mind. Glory to God. You, you yet have not come to the level and to the maturity to know that God is a God, amen, glory to God, that you haven't tapped into yet. Because if you have tapped into God, then you wouldn't be carnal about your walk with him. Glory to God. He said, aren't you carnal? Glory to God. This is what Paul likes. Here these people, the Corinthians, church people, they had racism among them. And they began to be envy and jealous and a lot of strife and division was among the Corinthians. Now listen here, glory to God. God told us as leaders to get the skinnicism out of the church. But no, leadership is putting the skepticism in the church. It's more division in leadership than there is in it. So here we have the Corinthians fighting about. The Bible said, for while one says, I'm a Paul, the other say, I'm of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? You following Apollos, you following Paul, these men are men's. Who following God? Who following Jesus? When Jesus went back to his home on high, he left instruction for us to stand on the apostolic doctrine. Glory to God, which is the apostle doctrine, meaning not no denomination, but stand on the word that Jesus gave the apostles. Now, how are you going to make that out of a denomination? Can't be. It is the word that we need to be following. It is the word of God. The Bible said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. No man, no woman can start another foundation. The word have already laid the foundation. All we're doing is build upon him what has already been laid. But now we got a split, racism. Everything is split. It was split back then and it's split now. We got Baptists over here. We got Methodists over here. We got Pentecostal over here. We got Apostolic over here. We got Presbyterian, Jehovah Witness. You name it and the world will claim it. But God told me to cry loud and to spare not and to show you where you are erring at. 
And where you are erring at, glory to God, that is racism. The nominal racism. When you are split like that. Because listen here, when we go into the heavenly kingdom, <laughs> we will not be divided. All of us going to be on one accord. All of us going to be up there together. Black man, white man, yellow man, red, whatever color you may be, it will not be glory to God. No racism, no skinnicism. And it ain't going to be no Baptist up here, no apostolic, no Pentecostal, no Presbyterian. None of these things, the nominal things, is going to be in heaven. We're going to all be on one accord in worship. It will be no division. So earth is our dressing up room. Uh-huh. For us, glory to God, to get prepared to strip ourselves from this segregation Glory to God to this move over thing. Glory to God because God trying to break you now because when you get up there, you will already be broken. It ain't going to be there unless you're not coming in. What's more important, being the nominal or going to the kingdom of God? Who are you following? Is you following a doctrine? Are you following denomination? Are you following Jesus? And the last time that I checked, Jesus is the word. Say, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word. Follow the Word, and you will never, never, ever go wrong. But these denominations have us acting all kind of bougie. Some of them have us acting like we divided. We don't know which way is up. Glory to God. Why? Because God is not a part of that. God is a whole God. Now, who is us to split him into all these sections? Like you split a chicken wing. It don't work like that. We got to think about what the Spirit is teaching us. Paul had to really teach them. He said, well, y'all carnal. Y'all say you're following me. You say you're following Apollos. Well, who following Jesus? All of us been taught by Jesus. He left the word. He left instruction. He did not tell you to set up denomination and divide his people. You know what? The Methodist is not getting along with the Baptist. The Baptist is not getting along with the Pentecostal. The Apostolic not getting along with anybody. Glory to God. And this is all racism. Denominational racism. I follow the word. And you better too. Because at the end of your story, and yes, all of us got a story, and all of that going to be written in the book of life, what and who we follow. And your best bet is to follow the word. The word don't error. The word don't make mistakes. But in denomination, you got to wear a certain thing. You got to look a certain way. You got to act a certain way. That ain't the word. That's not the word. You're not following the word. You following a custom. Can I teach? I don't care who get mad. God won't teach us to come on and bring clarity to the body of Christ. The body of Christ is supposed to be whole, like a whole pie. It cannot be split into fractions. God ain't a fraction God. He's a number one whole God. And if we got him on the inside of us, then we should be whole also. And it says here, who then is Paul? Who is they? Who is the apostolic? Who is the Baptist? Who is the Methodist? Who is the Presbyterian? Who is Pentecostal? Who is that? Glory to God. But ministers by whom you believe even as the Lord gave to every man. Those doctrines ain't nothing but doctrines. But the word of God is true, is raw, is uncut. There's no addition to it. And you can't take away from it. But when you are wrapped up in the racism, you can't see God. I heard the word of God say, when King Uzziah died, Isaiah said it, I saw the Lord. As long as uh, Uzziah was living, Isaiah couldn't see the Lord. So when Uzziah died, my God, mm, he was able to see the Lord. And the Lord was able to reveal him, reveal unto him. But as long as I, uh, Uzziah was in the way, Isaiah could not tap into God. 
And this is how we, as long as we in a racism state, I did not say leave your church, but I say follow the word. Don't follow a denomination. Every church got to follow the blueprint. It's only one blueprint. But when you got it sliced over here and sliced over there and it's chucked over there and it's chucked over here, then you out of order. You are a part of racism. Well, I don't like the way the holiness church do things. They be clapping their hands, but the Bible tells you, make a joyful noise unto him. He tell you to clap your hands, play the drums, play the instrument. Every church should be doing it. Shouldn't be no racism about that because that is the way God likes to be served. He's a very joyful God. He's a very merry God. So he liked to be served that way. He told us to sing hymns. Holding this ain't got no business picking at that is about hymns. Why? He told us to sing hymns. My God, hymns will soothe your mind. I love singing hymns. Anything done, do it with spirit. See, this is the key thing. What makes things dead is when you don't do it with spirit. But when you begin to clap your hand with spirit, sing hymns with spirit, then God gets the glory. He said, let the people praise me. Uh-huh. And then the earth will yield or increase. You won't have to look to the government. Mm. You won't have to look to all of these things that you're looking for for help when you begin to do it the way God said do it. And the blueprint is the word of God. The word of God will never stir us wrong. So the book of 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, third through the fifth verse was taught for our understanding, was taught for our closure. It don't matter whether you are part of the Baptist, the Methodist, Apostolic, glory to God, or whatever church you go to, if you don't follow the blueprint, you are out of order and you will never see the kingdom of God. Because God said anything that we do, let it be done decently and in order. We don't want no decent and order thing going on now. We want to be like Burger King. Well, this is the way I want to do it. This is the way I feel like I want to do it. No, it's not how we feel, but we got to do it the way God said do it. Because God's word is already established. The word of God ain't changing. Uh-uh. Glory to God. It said it's already established. And anything that is saying here, it will never be rewritten. Look to your neighbor and say the Bible can't be re rewritten. We just got to follow it. It don't matter how we feel or what we think or what our theory is. Glory to God. We got to follow the blueprint. Some say, well, I'm a theologian. Don't care nothing about your uh, theology. Uh-uh. God ain't a God of theology. He's a God of neology. Theology can't burst a grape. You cannot go to theology and get revelation knowledge. You got to go to neology. Get on your knees and pray. Cry out, I'm a father which are in heaven. And you will get the revelation to bring you up out of your mess. God began to tell me the reason why the church is not hearing from him. We caught up in racism. We hear over yonder here. We need to become whole. When we become whole, and begin to follow the real blueprint. Then we'll begin to hear from heaven. God is not even sending messages to prophets. Why? They in racism too. The whole fivefold that God sent to get the skinnicism out of the church is participating and leading the people into racism. Denominational racism. But God said, all that hear my voice today... Hard not your heart. Come out from among them and be ye separated. Separate in your mind. Separate in your heart. He did not tell you to leave your church. But you better be following the word. Don't follow a custom because that's not going to get you into the heavenly realm. It's only the blueprint of the word that's already written. Look to your neighbor and say, well, who followed Jesus? If we followed all of these customs, and listen here, the majority of us feeling things and following things that we like. We're not going to go where we're going to be taught raw word. We're not going to go where we can hear truth. The Bible says our ears are itching. We don't like truth. Nothing about the Bible 
makes me angry because why? I want to make it. And God want you to make it too. So you got, he said, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus had a mind to walk in truth and not in error. Jesus had a mind to walk in reality instead of fiction. But all of us got our own little mess over here and our own little mess over here and our own mess back there and over here and we all so wrong. Because anytime you get out from the word, the master of old, the blueprint, then you out of order. See, nowadays we don't want people to tell us we out of order. We want them to pat us on the back and tell us we're doing fine when we headed to hell. That's not a good preacher. When they know you headed to hell and they don't even try to warn you. Ezekiel said, in the word of God, God told Ezekiel, if you see the sword coming and you fail to warn my people, their blood is going to be required at your hand. But if you see the sword and you warn my people that the sword is coming, the blood is no longer required into your hand. Leaders, you got a job to do. Lead those people from skinnicism. God called you to get skinnicism out of the church. But what are you doing? You are still divided. Well, I can't get along with them over here. I can't get along with them. I don't know. God says, stop it. Be thy delivered. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You should be able to get along with anybody. Glory to God. And if you can't, just by chance that you can't, this is what you should do. Go your way and pray and ask God to help them to understand that you're trying to make it to heaven and they should too. And if they never get to that assumption, well, God didn't tell us not to be around anyone we can't get along with. But he did tell us not to make war. The majority of us is making war with each other. And we don't need to be making war. That's racism. Quit talking about the world is in the mess. All of this racism. Well, what about the church? The church is in a mess too. This is where all this stuff started from. It started from the church. Whatever you teach your people, that's how they're going to operate. Mm -hmm. That's how they're going to act. They're going to have to watch you. They can tell whether this one right or wrong. When God gave them a brain, how if you are not in the vicinity, who they going to watch then? They're going to have to go off their knowledge of the word of God. The word. The word. Look to your neighbor and say, it's about the word. The word should be alive in your heart, alive in your mind, alive in your soul, that you may cut sin left and right. The reason why sin is not being cut left and right, because we are in sin. When we participate in racism, we got our own little segment. We run around here, this one a cup, that one a cup. Well, you a cup too when you don't read the word. When you don't follow the blueprint. God tells you everything that you want to know from the word. If you're coming from the raw word, it cannot be kicked against. God told Paul, Saul, it's hard to kick against the prick. You cannot kick against the word. If the word said, let it be so. Quit trying to find a way out of it. I don't care how many Bibles you go get. The word of God is going to remain the same. Y'all know how we are trying to go get all these Bibles to make things wrong? No, 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 no. And then we make our own Bibles nowadays. But we cannot do it. For God is a God that's already established. He done already established how he wants us to go. But what are we doing? We caught up in a mess. Today, harden out your heart. Stop it. Learn about yourself. What are you? Some of us don't even know what we're about. Well, I've been there because my grandmama went there. I've been there because all of my people there. Well, what about your soul? When your people go before the Lord, they got to stand for themselves and you got to stand for yourself. You shouldn't be in a church because your grandmama went there, your father went there, all of your sisters and aunties and brothers went there. You should be there because you know 
that they teach in the word. Don't go there because of family oriented. Go there because of the word that is being token. And make sure it's the depths of the word. You got to be able to go through all 66 books and train and skill the people. That's what it's about. That's why he called leaders, the fivefold, the apostle, the evangelist, the teacher, the prophet, the pastor. He called all of those to get the skepticism mm, out of the church. But the skepticism remains the same. Why? Because we in phenomenal racism. I love you today. Be rich and rich and blessed. And remember, it's about the word, boo boo. It doesn't matter what's the name of your church. If you harden your heart against this word, you won't see God. Ask yourself a question. What's more important? Me following a denomination or me tapping in with God? And the only way you're going to tap in with God, you got to be a reader of his word. We love you today. We bring you greetings again from the Gospel Explosion Word Ministry, 811 South Street in the city of Sardis, Georgia, under the direction of none other than the Honorable Bishop Willie Jones, Jr. Have a blessed and a profound, productive day. God bless you from the Gospel Explosion Word Ministry. God bless you. Welcome to the Gospel Explosions Word Ministry of Sardis, Georgia. Our location is 811 Sap Street. Our pastor is the Honorable Bishop Willie Jones, Jr. Our service time as it follows Tuesday Bible study at 7.30, Sunday 10 a.m. prayer, 10.15 Sunday school, 11 a.m. morning worship. You are cordially invited to worship with us during our services. Thank you from yours truly, Miranda Pierce of the Gospel Explosion Word Ministry.